Hello and welcome. I am Scrapperlock and this is City of Heroes on the Rebirth server. We are with our level 6 stalker and we are um, <clears throat> currently very close to level 7. We have 4,365 XP with 272 to go to get to level 7. So we're going to get there today. We now have 10,000 information we need, remember, 800,000 by level 22 to get a full set of single origin enhancements on our powers. Let's take a look. Um, we're going to need to add more slots at level 7. we got to take care of three slotting stealth and health and stamina. Take this out. And we're also going to want to add slots to strike and slash and reconstruction needs to be six slotted by the time we get to level 22. Um, so we got a lot of slots we need, right? If we, we got level 7, 9, 11, 13, 15, 17, 19, and 21, which is eight levels. So we got 16 slots that we can do. We need to add two here and here, so that's four. We need to add three here, so that's seven. And we need to add eight here, that's 15. That's like basically every slot, and then we're going to have more powers. So I don't know. we got to make sure that health and stamina is three-slotted and reconstruction is six-slotted 100% before we get to level... Um, 22 so I may work on those I think I'm going to work on those first I might just triple slot health at level 7 stamina at level 9 and then move this, do this thing at 11 and uh, 13 we'll see because we're going to get assassin strike <clears throat> at level 8 and we're going to get integration at level um, 10 probably and <clears throat> those things are going to need to be slotted as well so we got a lot of slots we need to do and not a lot of slots that we're going to have until we get to our higher levels uh, we still have eight reward merits. I went looking. Um, it absolutely is the case that merit vendors, at least on Homecoming, have the archetyped origin enhancements. The vendors here in this zone do not. They may not have them in Praetoria at all because they know you're not going to be able to use them until like 20th level anyway. So when we get to level 20, I will go to the vendor that I absolutely know sells them, and we can look there and see if it's a server difference or if it's just a zone difference. But in the meantime, we are talking to the Tunnel Rat, who's going to give us our next storyline, I believe. <clears throat> so it says, the woman you see takes a long, deep breath within her mask before speaking. Her name's Tunnel Rat. Good to meet you, Tiger Strike. Heard all about you, all about you. Little information on me, very perceptive, always noticing things all the time, every second of the day. Makes me a little nervous, some, hmm. It was nothing. <clears throat> Makes me a little nervous sometimes. You smell interesting. That's kind of gross. Can't quite make it out. Are you here to help, or are you here to cause trouble? I hope it's not trouble for me, because I really hate it when that happens. All right, Robert Flores, cute guy. Aims too high, though. Thinks he can impress Vetrano. Nobody can impress, impress Vetrano. She has standards that are way too high for her own good. You're here about getting that PPD guy out, right? I can help you. It's what I was given to do, and I do what I'm given to do. It's what makes me me, you know what I mean. Okay, so let's see what mission she has. She says, all right, so you're on board now, which is great, because you're a lot more powerful than me, should be, than I am. Totally can use that. Let's see, was having problems with Paolo's family needing to be rescued. Couldn't go in myself, but that's fine now, right? Because you're here to help save the day, huh? What was that? Smelled something weird, really weird. Too weird to be normal, too normal not to be weird. Figure it out later. Focus on working with Tiger Shrike. So the deal with rescuing people is that we can't rescue them. Seems backwards. It is backwards. That's what happens in this place. Everything is backwards instead of forwards. We rescue them. They're seen as being on our side. That's not good. They get slammed. Can't have that. No one wants to be on our side. It's got to look like we're kidnapping them, or else the loyalists will think that the people we're rescuing were really on our side. That'd be awful, wouldn't it? People actually publicly supporting us? What was that? It was nothing, Tunnel Rat. What's our first step? And she says, so um, this is called Getting Out Alive, part one. She says, it's nothing like it used, she, she used to, the says it's nothing like she's used to it down here. Shake it off, shake it off. Got to move forward. Paolo, smart guy, maybe a little good looking. Too suspicious though, just me. He left the location of his father behind a movie poster. Weird way to do things. Don't think he's used to doing things in a shady manner. Not like me, not like us, not like those of us who watch. Got a location for you. 
No time to risk looking. No time to risk you looking at movie posters. Here's a location of Paolo's father. Get him. Get out. Just don't stay too long. Smells longer than anything. Someone like me, they smell you out really quick. So let's see. What does she have in her store? She just has inspirations. We're not going to bother buying any of those. I think we're fine. We've got our own little personal heel. And now we have to kidnap, pretend to kidnap Dr. Marino. Who is... Can I get up here? Yep. He is... Over here. All right, here we go. And it is really nice to be able to navigate through hostile enemies and be completely invisible to them. And to be able to run really fast with super speed is awesome as well. Hope I don't make you guys dizzy blowing through these corridors. Okay, let's turn off the super speed. I really like that we can come in, we can investigate the situation, we can see who's in here. Okay, no lieutenants. And let's start with a kill. I'm going to be really glad when I can take these temporary powers and brawl off of my toolbar. But for now, I can't do that. Click the wrong thing. So as you can see, because we're getting so many powers so quickly, we are not able... What are they doing to me? Minus regen. Uh, that's not going to work too well on me. Um, we are not able to get all of the all of the attacks, we even, or the defenses, we got to get fast healing at some point, we got to get dull pain, got to get integration, all of these things. So swipe up here, this is a, a, a weak, quick attack. We're not going to have that for a while, because we got to get our assassin strike and get build up for that. So those come first. So we won't have swipe for a while. But as you can see right now, we don't need it. One more attack will pretty much close our attack chain. And by close attack chain, I mean always having at least one of our attack powers up, not including Brawl and this temporary mutagen power, which are given to mutant characters. By the way, those temporary powers did not exist when the game first launched. Oh, okay, we can turn this off. They did not exist when the game first launched, so I would not have had this. I would have only had these two attacks and Brawl. At level 6, I would have had Hasten, however, because you would need that as the opener to the speed power set. And I am going to take Hasten at some point. This fits the concept of this character who is kind of like a mutant whose body is like rapidly accelerated healing and all of that. So it makes sense that she would um, also... And she's super fast, and it makes sense that her metabolism goes really fast, so she would get Haste as well. Guys, wait till you see how awesome Assassin Strike is going to be if you haven't seen it before. It is super cool. We won't get it until 8th level, of course, but it is super awesome. And, um, is that a lieutenant there? It is. So I screwed this up. I should have. I should have gone after this guy with the Assassin Strike. Not that it matters because I missed. Not the Assassin Strike, sorry, the, uh, the crit. But when you're in hide, whichever your first attack is coming out of hide is automatically a crit. Unless you're using the assassin strike, which then just does an automatic assassin strike, which is better than a crit. And I'll show you guys that when we get there. You can definitely see how nice it is having that auto heal, that, that or self heal. And now. The rest of the mission will be easy because they're all going to be one level lower than they were. So here's our auto crit. Look at that. With our bonuses from our damage into hit for the level up bonus. Almost can't miss and doing massive damage. And what you're really seeing is kind of... I'll just go ahead and attack these guys. It's kind of how this character is going to play when she has SOs. Um, because these bonuses are...
basically adding as much to the power as a bunch of single origin enhancements would add. We don't need endurance right now with this character, so we'll just go ahead and use it. Did that guy see me? Can I go back into hide? I am hidden. Let's hit the lieutenant. Get the extra damage bonus. Ordinarily, I go after minions, but because the lieutenant is um, much tougher and we want to do the extra damage with with a crit or an assassin strike, I hit the lieutenant first. This is actually different from the way I play a scrapper. If you go back and watch the now forbidden <laughs> um, scrapper videos. They're not actually forbidden. The homecoming server guy said they're grandfathering things in. You just can't post anything new. But anyway, if you go watch the Verboten um, Scrapper videos, you'll see that I pretty much always go after minions first rather than lieutenants. And the idea is that you clean up the trash first. Um, minions can do a lot of damage if you ignore them, and lieutenants take a while to take out. So if you're fighting a lieutenant while five minions are pounding on you, you can end up getting killed even though the minions themselves are really nothing to write home about ordinarily. And so, um, as a scrapper, I always go in, target the minions first, if I'm soloing. If I'm in a group, it's different. But if I'm soloing, I go in, Dr. Marino, we have to capture him. I go in, I take out the minions first, and then I go after the lieutenant or the boss. But with a stalker, because you want to get the big, really powerful opening hit, right? You don't want to just waste it taking out a minion who's going to go down in a couple of hits anyway. You want to use it against a boss so that you can take his health bar down to a, you know, down to 60% in one shot, or a lieutenant so you can take his health bar down to 30% in one shot, which is what happens with assassin strike. So. As a scrapper, I target the minions first and then the lieutenant when I'm soloing. But as a stalker, I always target the highest ranked guy first and take them out. Now, if it's bosses and lieutenants, sometimes I will actually go lieutenant first because you can probably one-shot the lieutenant. All right, we've kidnapped this guy. Or pretended to kidnap. And we're level 7. So yeah, I was saying I, I might go if it's like a boss to like a boss, a lieutenant, and five minions. I might hit the lieutenant first, and the reason is you can, with assassin strike and build up, you can take him out in one shot. You're not gonna be able to take the boss out in one shot, so then you got both the boss and the lieutenant shooting at you. Because if you take the lieutenant out in one shot, you've got one less guy attacking you. Right? And the idea is always to try to reduce the number of guys that are going after you, so that you can, um, kind of get the weight of numbers stop to stop being against you which is what's always happening with the villains right it's always they always have weight of numbers against you what you have is you're way more powerful than they are so the more of them faster you can take out the better anyway so we get a clue we do not so tunnel rat says rescue dr marino really good still suspecting some problems odd smells coming from that man still bigger problems around all around everywhere you look need to figure out how to get paolo's brother giacomo then Paolo himself, not easy getting PPD out. Really hate that this was given to me. I never did anything wrong to be given this hard stuff. Why couldn't Flores do it or Ricochet? Talking, taking that, that back on Ricochet, not her style to save people, more of a slammer, not a saver. Here, way to contact me without meeting face to face, much safer that way. So she's given me her cell phone number. We ask her for available missions, and let's just check the time on this. We are at 14 minutes, that's fine. Part 2. I don't know why I'm giving this tough stuff. Why couldn't it be homeless people to save? Getting a little suspicious, always throwing the difficult assignments at me, like I'm the one who can handle it, but if I'm the best, who's the worst? I'm not that good, really. So, I, if I'm seen as by, as others as that good, is that bad? Um, bad for us, bad for me, bad for everyone. Okay, here's the thing. Paolo's brother Giacomo is part of the Syndicate. Bad news for us that makes this things harder. Syndicate is known to be very sneaky, sneaky, very suspicious. Could possibly all be a trap, not something to put by the Syndicate. She means put past the Syndicate. Paolo says his brother can't get out on his own. Syndicate keeps tabs on everyone's movements. Very difficult. Once a sin in the Syndicate, always in the Syndicate. 
You only get out if you die, or worse. Well, there's not much worse th to dying, maybe. I'd have to think on it for a while, and maybe getting chomped by ghouls. Okay, I get it. So he, so what needs to happen to get Giacomo out of there? She says, right, the plan is simple, almost simple. Not simple enough to be called simple, just yeah, hard enough to be a pain. Syndicate have tracking beacons on most of their higher operatives. Giacomo is a higher operative. Un very unfortunate for us, of course. He couldn't just be someone they don't care about. The computer controlling these tracking beacons in Sifatine Industries. So you go, need to go in there and destroy that computer. That gives Giacomo free pass to do anything he wants, at least until they get a backup system going. But then it'll be too late. Unless it's all a trap, in which case it's already too late for both of us. <clears throat> Good thing to think of for our own futures. Okay. So we gotta go rescue this guy, but first we gotta level up. That jump thing is very useful. <laughs> that was, I believe, given to everyone, but partly because of super speed, right? Because super speed people complained that they had to take multiple movement powers to be able to move freely on all the vertical relief right like this right they had to take multiple movement powers because just super speed isn't enough to get you up and really the way to fix this correctly would have been to allow super speed to run up vertical surfaces right i should be able to get up to this building and just run up it right that's what the flash can do so why can't we do that and they just never wanted to do that the developers never never agreed to it statesmen wouldn't do it and I don't know why they couldn't. I mean, you can practically run up buildings with super jump, so the animations should be there. So I don't really know. But unfortunately, that means we need these this silly jump thing to go vertically. All right, so we get two enhancement slots. Uh, I really hate blowing them now on health and stamina. Let's do it. There's health. We'll get stamina next time and just get it done. It's got to be done by level 22, guys, so we may as well. Regular vendor to sell our stuff. Uh, no, that's the merit vendor, isn't it? I don't want the merit vendor. I want the vendor vendor right there. Um, let me see. Do I need... Oh, recharge. Let's put recharge in construction. Reconstruction. That gives us five seconds quicker. And we'll go ahead and put the damage on this thing. Go ahead. And then we'll just sell that. Do we have anything else? Oh, we got a couple of these. Oh, so is this... This is an orange. Okay, guys, let's go ahead. And uh, I'm going to pause this, and I'll bring you back when, when I've gotten us to the um, auction house. And then we'll put it up for sale and see what happens. All right, guys, so we're back. We're at the trading house in Imperial City, and um, we have the Cyanically Charged Brass. I'm going to put in here and see what it sells for. It sells for a million. Now, it has sold recently. There are 32 bidding and only 8 for sale. I don't know what these other guys are selling it for. Problem is going to be, if we try to sell for 900,000, we need 45,000 influence to post it. So we're not going to be able to do that yet. But that tells me we can get about a million influence for that, and then we'll be set for our level 22 enhancements. So we need to uh, go ahead and keep getting more infamy. We only have 11,000, so it's going to be a while. But that's all right. We can keep going. And, um, I mean, theoretically, I could probably put it up for, like, 100 thou and get the 100 thou, and then we would have enough for the next orange salvage. But we'll see. If we get another orange salvage, I may do that. Right, that is, you know, put one up for a very low price, just enough to put the other one up for a high price. And so um, we could do it that way, which would be, um, you know, not perf not the most efficient, right? The most efficient way is just hold it. Did I go in the wrong way here? No, we're all right. The most efficient way is just hold it until you have enough to put it up for a million and then sell it for a million. Um, there's 32 bidding and only 8 for sale, so that means we should be able to make good money on it tomorrow or the next day or whenever we have enough influence, inf information. Ugh. I'm never going to remember the right word. Inf is all anybody calls it in chat. Okay. So we are now... Can we 
move this, yeah. We are now going to select our mission and destroy the Syndicate's tracking computer. The music is really cool in this zone. I really like the texturing. I think this is a lot nicer than the texturing in Paragon City. I wish they had updated Paragon City with the newer textures, but I think one of the reasons they didn't was because they wanted this zone to look different from the other zones. Although if you go to Callisti Wharf, which I can, uh, which you can see in my scrapper video when I got to a high level, uh, which is an unfinished zone, if you go to Callisti Wharf, which I don't know if they have um, on this server, but they have on Homecoming, if you go to Callisti Wharf, it's the same kind of texturing and um, lighting and everything. All right, so now we are in a an office here, and we need to put our hide back on. And we need to destroy the tracking computers and beat up these guys. Hmm, I wonder what you could be doing here, Tiger Shrike. Who's talking to me? Don't you understand? It's a bad idea. Bad for your health to stick your nose in syndicate business. Well, that means I'm going to have to kill some people to show just what happens when I stick my nose in. I think this character, when we get to the hero side, is definitely going to go vigilante rather than pure hero. She's going to be more of like a like a Wolverine type character, willing to quote unquote do what it takes, but still being on the good side. Yeah, the coughing, I guess, is from that mutagen. I'm making them sick, I guess. Yeah, so one of the problems um, that we may face, a little problems we may face with Infamy until we can get that first orange to sell is, that, or information, sorry guys, um, is that um, when the game first came out, Influence was one to one, had a one to one relationship with um, experience, right? That is, you defeated somebody for 16 experience, you got 16 experience and 16 influence, right? Or infamy. What happened is to speed up the leveling curve, to make it so, because people were complaining it was taking too long to level, and after the game had been live for a while, there was no reason to keep it going slow. You know, or initially you want it to take a while because you want people to learn how to play the character. They also didn't have enough content, as I've mentioned in my scrapper videos, for everybody to, for you to get all the way from level one to level 40, which was the original level cap, and then eventually 50. There was a lot of street sweeping you had to do, um, and they did that to kind of stop you from going too fast. So the needs for those kinds of things started to fade I say as my character fades, started to fade as more and more content came online, as players had played the game more and more. And so what they did was they I did two things. In the low levels, but not the high levels, they reduced the amount of XP it takes to level. So it takes less XP to gain a level in the first 20 levels, I believe. 10 or 20, I can't remember. I think it's the first 20 um, than it used to at live. And then they also increased how much XP you get Per villain. Okay, I thought maybe that guy was lieutenant, but he's not. Um, so, like, let's say it used to take 200 XP to get to level 2, and you got 10 XP per villain, so you had to kill 20 villains, right, to gain a level. And they changed it so that it would only take, say, 150 XP to get to level 1, and you got 15 XP per villain. Right? So it only takes 10 villains, defeating 10 villains to gain a level. You see what I mean? And so you can see how they buffed it. These guys used to be worth 11 experience, right? They buffed the experience by 50%, right? But they didn't change the influence. And so that means that you gain less influence, or in this case information, per level than you did when the game first launched. There's some guys down here. Let me do the upstairs guys first, and then I'll come down. So yeah, so whatever um, influence or information we have, 
if we were playing the game the old way at this level, we would have more. Ah, we got a yellow salvage. That's nice. Might be able to sell that on the auction house for a little bit. I may check it. I'll do that offline. I'm not going to do it online. But we may be able to sell that on the auction house. Um, and... Ouch. So it's doing 14 damage. just want to see if these guys have any resistance. Yeah, they have a little bit. It's 16 damage per hit. And it's only doing 14, so they've got, you know, maybe 15% resistance to slashing. Um, so, anyway, if we have 15,000 influence right now, we would have 22,000 at this same level under the game the old way, right? When it first came out. It took a lot longer to level. You weren't going to be level 7 right away like this. We don't need the endurance. I'm really sick of using Brawl, I gotta tell you. And we got some more enhancements to sell. So what I'm saying is, if we look, right, at this point, we would probably have somewhere around, well, another couple thousand, 13 or 14,000 information under the old, you know, the launch way of doing things than we have now. All right, so we don't have anything in here. Stairway. And there's some guys. Nobody's captured here. So what are we doing? We're destroying the tracking computer, so my guess is that will make noise. Let's go ahead and use the Sturdy. If you know from my Scrapper video, I like luck better than Sturdy. I may change my mind about that with this character. With resistance characters, it's sometimes better to stack Sturdy. But this character, though, she's not going to really be resistance or dodge. She's going to be self-heal, right? So, we won't need the green pills, so we might keep a column of orange and a column of purple. We'll just have to see. Not sure yet, guys. We gotta, we gotta think, I gotta think about it and see how things play out. Have not played a stalker past level 11 in probably 10 years, and have not played a Claws Stalker ever, and the last time I played Claws Regen was probably 13 years ago. Whoops, went the wrong way. So we want to go this way. I just love how you can walk right past them, and they can't even see you. It's awesome. I love being able to self-heal. That is so great. It's almost like you're carrying an extra couple of inspirations that you don't even see on your bar. Over the course of like a two minute period, I can hit like one of these, this, one of these, and this. You know, and so it's like you're having four inspirations instead of two. Yeah, the only negative to doing a scrapper instead of a, a stalker instead of a scrapper for the claws regen really is the lack of the um, quick recovery, which improves your stamina. I always, always want more endurance. Always. It's just always better to have recovery so you can keep your toggles going. You don't need to put as many endurance reducers in your powers. I used to be with a claw with my claws regen scrapper. I'm pretty sure I didn't. I don't think I needed any endurance reduction SOs in any of her powers, because quick recovery was so good. It's like, it's like it used to be like twice as good as stamina. So when you had that and stamina, it was almost like you had quick recovery six slotted or whatever. It was really awesome, 
and you just never had any endurance issues. Now, so far, we're not having endurance issues with this character, and one advantage of regen over something like, say, super reflexes is there is no, um, there are no toggles. Now, the disadvantage is, as you can see, when you get hit, man, you get hit all the time, right? You get attacked. We don't want to get surrounded by a lot of enemies, because they will hit. There's, we have no dodging ability. We're just going to have to keep healing, right? But we will get some extra hit points from Dull Pain. We will get some resistance, I believe, from Integration. And um, and one of the things that you've that I haven't had to do yet with this character is rest. We're going to do it now. What's going on here? Rest. There we go. So this is another thing that's a change. Back in the day, rest was on like a... I think it was almost either a 5 or a 10 minute recharge. Now it's on like a... Three minute. It used to be like, I think it used to be like a six minute recharge or something. They sped that up too because people were getting annoyed at how long rest took. And I remember a friend of mine who was a blaster. He act, dude, the guy actually six slotted rest. <laughs> he six slotted it and put six recharge enhancers in it so that it would recharge every couple minutes. And so what he was doing was getting into fights. And then he would, like, at the end of e almost every battle, he could just stop and rest. And so he was, like, he's like, he didn't need to worry about endurance. He didn't need to worry about his hit points, because after every battle, he would just stop and rest. There were actually people doing that during live when the game first came out. Right? Because they didn't realize how precious slots were going to be. They really didn't. And they didn't realize how important SOs were going to be later in the game for other powers. And I'm sure he regretted it, and he probably respect out of it. But, um, but yeah, initially, there were people doing that. They were six-slotting Brawl. Which is just nuts. Because, like, well, you need Brawl every time because you don't have, your powers don't recharge fast enough. And it's like, yeah, but they're going to recharge fast enough. I'm looking. I hear computer noises, but I don't see any glowies. They're going to recharge fast enough when you get your recharge enhancers on them. They're going to recharge fast enough when you have more of them, right? Okay, so where is... Oh, okay, so here's where we've got to go. Alright. So they definitely will, you know, we're going to have no problem with a closed attack chain and two or three more attack powers. There's no need to try to make Brawl better. We're going to stop using it. It's a crappy power. It's just there at the beginning to help you. But there were people, I mean, dude, there were tankers who would just use Brawl and Taunt before Gauntlet came out, before it mattered. Right? They would just take their defensive powers, they would take a bunch of pool powers, and they would use like their, whatever their initial attack was and brawl. And there were people who sat there and did the math. And on some of the really crappy tanker powers, brawl was actually better than your tanker powers. And so people would just slot that. I always thought that was crazy. Certainly you wouldn't do it now, right? It's different now. You don't need to six slot um, health and stamina because you can't. You know you can't use more than three slots. You don't need to six slot quick recovery. You don't need to six slot fast healing because you can't use more than three slots. And so you've got all these extra slots available, or, you know, that you can put on other things. So you don't need to use brawl. And ultimately, one of the things that people had to re realize as the game was going on is. Almost like you get too many powers. Wow, that hurt. In the sense that you get more powers than you can six slot. Right? And I've always believed taking a power, you should only take a power that either doesn't need any slotting or that you plan to six slot, if at all possible, unless you're talking about a power that can only take three slots, like a passive heal. Right? But I will not take attack powers and then go, oh, I'm not going to slot them. No, to me, if I'm going to take it, I'm going to slot it. And that's why I would rather have, say, seven of these powers. 
right, and have them all six slotted, then have all nine and have them four slotted. But that's just me. That's the way I do things. I think I see the computer upstairs. Yeah, one of the things you will find is I do not, at least initially, I am not worrying about setting up slots for um, endgame. I'm s I only think in terms of single origin or or training enhancing, you know, like um, invention enhancements that are generic. I do not worry about the enhancement sets. So we have to destroy this. I don't worry about enhancement sets. Maybe I'll get them later on, but I don't slot for that. I slot for the single classification enhancements, right? The ones that are just accuracy, the ones that are just recharge. And I've always had no trouble with that. We already have locations of every resistance. Every person of resistance is funneled out of Pretoria, you lose Tiger Shrike. And do they know that I am resistance now? I don't know. Let's head out and see. We got some enhancements. We're approaching level 8, I believe. We won't, we won't get there this episode, I don't think, because we're already at 36 minutes. But um, we contact our contact. And she says, Good timing, Tiger Shrike. Just talked to Paolo. He said his brother is with his father now. We've got one of our trams ready to get them out of the city. Have a little complication with Paolo, though, huh? Problem on your end? No, 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 no. No problems on your end. Why are you having problems on your end? We're not supposed to have problems. Knew this smelled bad from the beginning. Had a feeling, a gut feeling. I can't handle this. I'm not supposed to handle this. Not meant to handle this. Just supposed to bring people from A to B, not fight a giant crusade. Syndicate, no, we're all the people? We helped rescue our... No, 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 no. What did we do? Too many complications. We're all going to get chomped. All right. So she's going to have another mission for us, but we're going to stop here. I'm going to go sell things, and let's take a look at this salvage. Oh, wow. Okay, we got a couple of yellows. So, I, guys, I'm going to pause this. I'll bring you back to the enhance, the uh, s the spot where you can sell salvage, and we'll see if we can maybe get a little bit for the yellow. I just want to show you guys how this works. Um, we'll see if we can maybe get a little bit for the yellow um, salvages, and... Um, and use that money to put the orange one up for sale. I don't know if we can actually do that today because we, we're really far from the 45,000 that we need. I mean, we only have still 11,000. We maybe have 13,000 after we sell our these enhancements. So, um, I'm speaking of which, we can add some, right? Let's go ahead and increase our accuracy there. Increase our da damage there. There we go. We don't need the rest of these. Don't need range for sure. All right, so I'm going to pause this, and I'm going to sell these enhancements, and I will bring you back in just a sec, and I'll we'll see what we can do with the auction house. All right, guys, just a follow-up. There's no way we can do it because the yellows aren't selling for more than a 1,000. So I'm just going to sell them to a vendor, and um, we'll have a few thousand more. We'll end up with about 18,000. We just got to wait till we get over 50,000 influence or information, and then we'll be able to sell our precious iron salvage for a lot of money. And then we'll be good all the way to level 22. So that's it for now, guys. I'm going to head back to um, the low-level zone, and I will be back with another episode in the near future. Until then, I am Scrabalock, and this has been City of Heroes on the Rebirth server. Have a good day.